Okay, here we are again with another interesting program in just a bit over 50 lines of code. The project we're going to be looking at is Conway's Game of Life. If you don't know what Game of Life is, it's what you see in front of you now. It's a mathematical game with a grid of cells, some of which are full and others are empty. The game then enforces a few simple rules that define what happens with the board in the next cycle. So the rules look like this. If a cell has less than two neighbors, it dies of loneliness. Like this one here, these two here, or these two down here. Then if a cell has more than three neighbors, it dies of overpopulation. For example, this cell in the middle here. Then if an empty cell has exactly three neighbors, it's born. Like this one here. And finally, if a cell has just two neighbors, it stays the same. For example, like this one here. Okay, now let's look at the implementation. The basis of this implementation actually comes from a Geeks for Geeks article, but I modified it in a way so that it looks just a bit nicer. First up, we have to define our grid. So let's scroll down here where the entry point of the script is. Here's the first state of the grid. And as you can see, it's nothing more than a two dimensional array of zeros and ones. Now let's scroll back up to the top and look at the function where the logic lies. As the name implies, this function produces a next generation of the grid it receives as input. The first thing it does is it creates a new variable called future, which is the same dimensions as the original grid, but it only contains zeros. Then it loops over all rows and over all columns. So the loop variables stand for the position of the cell in the grid. So basically we run this block of code inside here for every cell in the grid. And for each iteration, we have the cells X and Y coordinates. First thing this loop does is not exactly the most straightforward code that I've ever seen, but essentially it checks every cell to the left, every cell to the right, above and below the current one. And based on that, it counts the number of cells neighbors that are actually alive. These range expressions here actually evaluate to minus one, zero and plus one. So in other words, cell before and cell after and cell cell above and cell below. Okay, so this next thing is just a small correction of our neighbor counting algorithm. And below that, we have an implementation of the actual rules of the game. To recap, if a cell has less than two neighbors, it dies. If a cell has more than three neighbors, it also dies. If a cell has exactly three neighbors, it's born. And in all other outcomes, the cell's value stays the same. Then we repeat this process for all the cells and finally we return the produced grid from this function here. Great! Now let's scroll down just a bit and look at the only remaining function. This function loops over all the cells and prints a different character based on the cell state. So this function basically just prints out the whole grid. And now at the bottom of the file, contained inside this if statement, is basically our quote unquote main function. This if statement is just a Pythonic way of saying execute this piece of code right here just if this file is being ran as a script and don't execute it if it's included as a library. Anyways, here we first instantiate the initial state of the grid and then we run an endless loop where we first generate a new generation of the grid, then we compare it to the previous generation and if it's exactly the same, that means there's nothing left to generate so we break out of the loop and exit the program. On the other hand, if the grid did change, we clear the screen with this escape sequence here, then we use another escape sequence to put the cursor to the top left of the terminal and then print the title of the game and after that we print the new version of the grid. Finally all there's left to do is to save the grid as the previous one for the next loop iteration and also add some sleep so that we can actually see what's going on. In the terminal we can run this file using python and let's see what happens. So here's an example of a glider. And here, for example, is a simple self-repeating pattern. As you can see, there's not much going on here, but hopefully you had at least a bit of fun. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again. Bye!